everyone, my name is Irene and welcome to my channel Leafing Around where we talk all about tropical plants and tropical gardens. In this episode, it is very much triggered by someone wanting to visit my garden tomorrow. So I have to transform this space that I have. This is a planter area that I've put up for about three months now and I haven't gotten around to planting stuff on it. So some might say I have a really nice garden already, but let me tell you there's always something to do and the fastest way for me to get anything done is always to invite someone to visit me then I really gotta get it done so this person is visiting me tomorrow afternoon and let's get started so this is the planter area that I'm talking about it has currently a huge bird nest fern on it it's beautiful look at them they are all putting up new fronts now but apart from that it's rather empty so Next thing, what to put in here. Before we even start planting, we have to think about the hardscaping. So, I wanna think about what else I wanna put in here. And in fact, very closely tied to that is what junk do I wanna get rid of that might look good here. So, I have got a piece of wooden fence. This is something that I had before. And then when I renovated the upstairs garden to put in the stairs, um, this became redundant. So I'm now very pleased that I could reuse this somewhere else. Because we're gonna put that wooden fence, which is pretty heavy, we won't want to have it sitting in just soil. So I'm gonna put some um, blocks so that it has a more solid, hardy surface to sit on. Ah, a shoe. This is my shoe. Yeah, okay. So this is your foundation, and then I layer more bricks on top. And the reason I'm doing this before I put the wood is so that the termites won't be in touch with the soil where they can then assess the wood easily. I've learned my mistake that way. And there you go. Okay, so now I think we're ready to put that wooden fence on. So I, I found free labor here. Yeah, he's a strong man. Quite handy sometimes to have around. Whoa. Very good. I knew it's handy marrying this guy. Yeah. Good, good job, good job. Thanks, thank you. You can go back, wash your car now. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. This fence is sitting on some bricks looking good next we want to make sure we've got the right potting mix inside so i'm thinking of putting some aeroids in this planter and so i want it to be very well draining sort of mix and as this is quite a huge area so i'm filling up the bottom with kind of rubbish if you like so these are a leftover construction material these are broken terracotta pots uh, you could chuck in sticks and whatever and then I would fill it up as my first layer. And after that, pumice. So these are large ones to help give it better drainage too. And I also stick in some charcoal bits. Then we mix them up real good. Nice. Next, we go around looking for homeless plants. Plants that haven't found their forever home. I don't know if you're like me, but I have a problem committing plants to a permanent space. So I still have a lot of them in the pot like this huge monster. So I think this could go in the planter. And then this uh, was called a Philodendron godii. I think Today it is a tomato film. I hope I say that correctly, but it's 
it's pretty huge too and yes let's find it a permanent home then we try take the plant out from the pot Ew. Ew. I don't want to disturb the roots too much and I don't want to put my hand in it okay I'm gonna pour the plant into the planter box Okay, we have one plant in. More space. Ugh. Oh my god. Ow, ow, ow. It's really difficult to do this and film at the same time because you get to see all my mistakes. Okay, so you should have made room for the pot before you bring the plant here. I feel like maybe this is sufficiently roomy by now. I'm gonna take my pot of Monstera. Check out the beautiful roots in this. Okay, um, ah, all right, not too bad, okay, now I just gotta cover the soil on top with the stuff that I took out before. So now we put this baby in. Any root rot? No. Very good. Okay. Ah. Oh my god. It's circular. It's hitting the back. It's filling up the entire planter box. <clears throat> okay. All right. It is what it is. This one is heavy. I think it's in muddy soil. But at this stage, I can't be bothered taking out the muddy soil. It seems happy in it. So I feel like this is maybe a little too low and too spready outy and getting into the footpath. So, and it's kind of dark now at seven. I'm gonna call it a day and continue tomorrow. Gonna sleep on it uh, to consider whether I, I'm gonna elevate this. Yeah. Hi everyone, this is the next day at about 9 a.m. now. And I've just had my coffee. So, last night, this plant appeared to me in my dream. This plant, formerly known as the Philodendron godii, and now called the Tomatophyllum sprucianum, it is not happy here. It says it doesn't want to stay in this planter because look at its glorious circular nature so it needs a lot of space space to grow in all direction and this place doesn't provide it so i'm gonna listen to my plan and and not put it in the planter for now or forever and and this plan um also called out to me last night as i was sleeping it says please please take me out from my muddy clay-like soil which I was 
too lazy to do yesterday because it was getting dark and I wanted to film this as quick as possible. But okay, I hear you. So I will just loosen part of its soil. Not everything so that it doesn't get too traumatized. Okay, so I think I removed about half of the soil. And to see that I think some of the roots are dead. So I'm gonna remove the dead roots since I'm gonna be plonking in there for a long time and probably never put it out again. So Oh, just cut myself. Uh, so, when you hold the scissors, make sure you don't put your thumb here, like I just did. <laughs> so, instead of continuing to film, uh, I thought I better take care of my cut and win. So, I just put the plaster on. Hurts a little bit, but not too bad. Okay, now, so anything that's soft can go away. So you see the healthy roots are like quite white looking and then this one, it's not good anymore. So let's get rid of it. Oh, there is quite a lot. It smells fine, so nothing's rotting. That's good. So after forever, I think we got pretty much most of it out. And as you could see, hopefully you could see more of healthy, nice white roots. So healthy roots, healthy plant. And so I advise you if you're potting or pulling out your plants from its pot, you should really take a look at the roots and then do the necessary maintenance. And the amount of root that I've cut off, uh, let me show you. So these are the roots that I've taken out. I want to show you what they look like so you could recognize them. They're usually like really limp looking and hollow on the inside. So when you squish on it, there's like nothingness. And so these roots, you want to get rid of them because they're not <laughs> going to be doing any good sitting in your pot or your potting media. They would just rot and then it will attract bacteria and all sorts of problems. So yes, best thing to do is just chuck them away. So I will now take this out and then leave it here for a while. Ooh, ouch, I shouldn't have whacked it so hard on the spade. Sorry. And then go get another plant to replace the one I just took out. So I think, hmm, um, oh yeah, yes, this one. We're gonna try on with this. Uh, notice that I am selecting pretty large plants because I have anchored this with my bird nest fern, which is huge. And if I start putting really tiny plants, I'm afraid it could be really out of proportion. So this is another fairly biggish plant that I have. It's a philodendron of sort, and I have no idea what philodendron it is. If you know, please do let me know in the comments. Um, so now, we're going to have to take it out of the pot. Um. Oh, beautiful and so easy too. I love it. Great. And nothing seems to be rotting. That's good. I don't have to do all the work of, of removing dead roots. Okay, so let me just make a little hole here so I could plunk it in. I decided that maybe this philodendron, I should push it more to the back because it will climb up and then it might as well just climb out on this, giving me more rooms to put something else in front. I'm now thinking to put a bit more kind of climby plants underneath the wood 
so that in months to come and years to come they would make their way up and imagine how nice that could look so I have now found this pot which I have meant to put out against a tree for the longest time and I haven't so this project is great it makes me give these plants a permanent home so this is a Raffirodora foraminifera or Megasperma I'm not very sure and it's got these nice lovely holes I love them so much and I'm just gonna put them here now I hope I could take it out of the pot easily Never, never step on your soil, then you will be compacting it. So, don't do what I just did. Okay, so I've got that Raffirodora climbing, well, not clear climbing, but at least grounded close to this plank so that it can climb. Next, I'm gonna try ground some alocasia. If you've seen my video two videos ago with Mr. Lone Wong, he is quite the expert in alocasia growing. He highly recommends grounding the alocasia if your climate allows it because it really, they're just happier there compared to the pots. So I do have a lot of alocasia in pots and this solves two problems. I need to have something and then they need to get out of their pots. So starting with this and so let's try to take them off. Always avoid pulling out the plant from your pot. Rather I just like to prefer to tilt them out and they're so chunky I think I would just do it straight into the planter box here because everything's just gonna fall out Whoa. I have a bit of a problem here because in my wisdom I grew them in the net pot and the net pot have so much holes that I I put mosquito net all around it and now the lovely roots have wrapped themselves all around my mosquito net so bear with me a moment while I try to unravel the roots I feel like I'm performing surgery. So the lesson here is, uh, yes, the mosquito net is good so that your potty mix don't fall out, but it's a real pain if you have to remove it. And why am I removing it instead of leaving it in there? Because I feel the roots will mm, probably get bigger and then the holes in the mosquito net is gonna kind of maybe restrict them. Yay! Freedom! Freedom from mosquito net! Yay! Okay, good. Very good. Look at that healthy, healthy roots. When it came, it didn't have any roots at all. So where I'm gonna have my alocasia, I'm gonna put a bit more pumice and make it chunkier. Also to keep them very, very well drained. As you know, they are pretty fussy and they could go asleep any time. Okay. And gonna get more alocasia. Okay, this one, this one. Okay, let's see how it look here. And then what else? I have more. Um, oh yeah, the pink dragon. So this is my pink dragon, and I put it in a net pot, thinking it will really enjoy the extra breeze and be able to breathe. I've got a little baby, yay. So let's just see how they look all together before I take the trouble to take them out. Looks good. And then I believe they will grow much bigger after being grounded. So let's put them here. Oh, let me just show you, you know, root porn. So we've got big, thick roots and little tiny ones that draws nutrients. I've got it in a mix of perlite, pumice, um, pine bark, and even this squishy, spongy thing called puff curl, which I found here. This is the puff curl, which I found really great in, in rooting things. Oh, what is that? Oh, could that be a bulb I just threw away? I'll, I'll look for it later and okay good oh the roots 
we need to be gentle with the roots. I'm just gonna use a lot of pumice because um, <clears throat> they're very good not only for drainage, adding oxygen, but also they have much better water retention properties compared to perlite. Mm. So this one which we have painstakingly um, taken out the dead roots, I was going to put it in here. But I feel like it's now too large and overwhelming the alocasia, which is going to go big and tall. And maybe this is no longer appropriate for here. So it is okay when you're doing the project to change your mind and do what's best. And then you have to be bold enough to admit that this is, was a mistake. So let's find another alocasia to fit in there because I feel like I've got a lot of alocasia now and another alocasia would, would fit better in here. I have another pot here which is the alocasia zebrina, well known for its beautiful, beautiful stalk, reminding you of a zebra. I think it's from the Philippines endemic to Philippines so you've got great alocasia in Philippines so I'm just gonna tilt over now Ooh. I was very wise I've put it in chunky mix very good okay um so I think maybe like this and then fill the rest with more thinness. So what I did there was to secure the top of that wooden frame, tie it with rope to the railing so that it wouldn't fall on me. I hope that works. I've secured it in three different spots. Now we have put up this, this wooden vertical thing and let's put plants on it now. So I'm thinking something that trails down would look good, some ferns, splotches. I'm gonna try to use what I already have and then let's see how that goes. I'll start off with this Philodendron Brazil, which I've nicked off my other vertical wall um, and see how that goes. So this is fairly long and Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Okay. And then I have, and I have this fern thing which maybe I will hang in the middle. Okay, good. And then I have some, what else that I have? Um, you know, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to need some focal plants. If you have watched my vertical garden design video, I have talked a lot about putting in some feature focal plant in whatever area that you wanna make. And I'm starting to think something that would be colorful, that could pop from there would be very nice. I have used bromeliad for my other wall and I wanna try to do something different here. I think I'm gonna have to do some plant shopping. So, hey, wait a minute. I have to go to the nursery right now and, and see what speaks to me. I'll come back with some beautiful focal point plants for us. Because I'm hoping to find an orchid. So, I'm very excited. I have found what I wanted. One, two, three. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Eye candy. Have a look. I'm back with orchids. So I think this is called the Vanda orchids and they have beautiful 
huge blooms. Now I know nothing about orchids. I bought them because they have in bloom right now and I think they would look really good on the wall. Plus, they have these beautiful roots. Can you see them? They're so gorgeous. I think it's a statement piece on its own, just the roots. I asked the seller, is this easy to take care of? And she said, yes. And then, will they flower all year round? And she said, yes. And therefore, I bought them. If you know anything about orchids and how to take care of these Vanda orchids, please let me know. I just want to let you have a good look at it. It's so beautiful. I mean, with the plant rage now, on aroids I think orchids have missed out they are not trending you could say so this is a really good time maybe to buy them because they're still really affordable and if you could see the roots there are in absolutely no media at all I am really amazed it, so let's put it up now Not tall enough. the orchids quite closely together in a clustered way because I wanted the, the blooms to be kind of not too far apart and I do hope the orchids like to be closely huddling together if you do know more about the behavior or what these orchid like do let me know in the comments below and while I was shopping in the nursery of course I did not just buy tree plants oh yeah I forgot to say this tree why did I just buy why did I use tree and not two or four so the details of it is in the video up here but just a quick recap so this is about the rule of odd it is much better to have an odd number of things compared to an evil number of things this is for a landscaping purpose or even when you are composing an image for for photography so the rule of odds just remember if you're buying plants don't get two get three don't get four get five instead and to know more watch this video here um, and of course I didn't just buy these three orchids I bought more and I'm looking for it ah it's here okay so I bought this spectacular looking orchids just feel like it's really out of this world uh, I love it for the root system I'm not quite an orchid person but I think I just started with this trip to the nursery and I felt like it looks awesome I believe one day it will bloom and reward me with flowers one day so I will place that here just to give it a more an even more chaotic look um, what else we have also this orchid, this is called the Dendrobium farmery and I know this because it's written right here at the back. So let's find a place for it too. Um, maybe like here. I don't know what the hell this is but it's orchid and it has no leaves but I'm assured that this will flower one day even this even if it's a plant that has no leaves so oh look yes look proof here it has a flower can you see the flower so this is a very weird plant that has only roots and flowers and no leaves Go here. Um. so I managed to find this Hyperzia goblii maybe and I think it will look good here where I have placed this odd looking orchid so I'm just gonna take it off so this is quite kind of trial and error experimental I did say in my previous video to design everything and then implement it but I think in real life you could only plan so far and in this case I did not practice what I preach I did not plan very well I just kind of start to take out plants from other parts of my garden for here 
Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. Okay, that, that would do for now. It's gonna grow longer and it needs to go up further, but for now this will have to do. And then this I've removed and draped it here. In the meantime, uh, this could come out too. You know, just go with the flow, be creative, make changes as necessary. So I think like this vertical thing is kind of done, but how about the overall feel of it? What do you think? I think we're missing something uh, of this height, kind of over here. Um, hmm, what shall I use? Ah, you know that philodendron gold, gold, fun bun, gold DI, now known as tomato film spricianum, the one that I had there originally and that was just too much for it. I think I'm gonna try elevate this and somehow put it over there. Mm. So because it's going up there, I have changed it into a white pot so that it could camouflage with my white wall. So let's give it a go. And to secure this pot, I'm gonna tie it with a string. I'm eager to see how it looks. Not bad, I'll say. It looks pretty jungly here now. Um, so are we done? Mm, I think maybe a little bit more things at the bottom. here that I want to push closer to this because I've asked you for your ideas and you say that one of you some of you think that a burn tree will look really nice here so I'm gonna attempt this oh my god <laughs> okay I think this is the best I could do push it as close as possible without toppling over everything. I'm just gonna put all my previous plants back. This, this elbow, I think I will make it climb this tree one day when I have the time. This is a variegated peace lily. Um, this is Aurea of sort, some philodendron, some random dead plants that I hope to still revive. I have this beautiful orchid which I also bought yesterday and maybe it could go here oh oh pot's too big okay that'll do for now oh nice so after all that hard work of pushing my fern tree towards here I realized in the footage you can't actually see the tree so I'd like you to look up here and this is the fern tree that I'm talking about so it is uh, rather high kind of out of your eyes view actually and so I'm thinking this part here is still looking pretty empty and I have another fern tree so I'm just gonna bring that here so, this is another fern tree I have lying around in the house. Ow. It's still in a poly bag. It's been in the poly bag for I think eight months now. I should really take it out of the poly bag, but I haven't. I think 
that's good. This is my eye level fern tree. And then there is underneath a big mama fan fern tree. And it kind of just gives me an instant fill of this space, which we have a gap here. Ta-da! This is done. This is my favorite part. So I hope you like it. enjoyed this makeover and if you do please consider subscribing and sharing it out with all your friends and families in the meantime if you like to support me and my channel you can do so by buying me coffee at the link down below and until my next video i bid you selamat tinggal adios paalam